Hey friends, welcome back. So I'm just finishing up some office work. Not my favorite job, let me tell you. Um, I've had to do a bunch of scanning and paperwork and that's not fun. Not fun for me anyways. I would much rather be doing something else than paperwork. Um, but almost finished, so yay. So other than some paperwork that I'm doing, which I'm gonna call it quits for a minute. Let me show you what I've been doing. Um, something has happened to my dishwasher, which has made it so that it doesn't work. And now I have to do dishes by hand, which is not my favorite thing either. <laughs> Anyways, I got the dishes done for breakfast and lunch. And so now it's kind of, kind of clean. But now I'm making a mess because I'm working on wheat. These are little wheat berries that I soaked overnight. And I am going to sprout these. I should do a video on showing you how I make my sprouted wheat bread. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe not this video, but in an upcoming video. If you're interested, I will show you how I do this. The reason why I first soak my wheat and then sprout them is because there's phytic acid or phytates on the outside of each of these wheat berries. The phytic acid is just a coating that covers all seeds, nuts, um, it covers your beans, like all your dry beans, it covers your rice and all your wheat berries, all of your um, cereal grains, they all have phytic acid on the outside and they need to be broken down. The phytic acid is actually a protective coating that covers the, the berry or the seed or the nut and that's just so that when it falls to the ground it, um, it doesn't like germinate prematurely. It's a protective coating. So it, for, for us, for humans, it's super hard for us to digest. The healthy way of doing it is to soak it in something, whether it be apple cider vinegar, sea salt, or whey. Um, those are the three that I can think of that we can use to soak these. And I soak these overnight and that breaks that down. And I do the same with um, any of your dry beans. Um, I soak it in a medium, it's called a medium, just like a tablespoon of sea salt or a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And, and you add that to the water that it's soaking in. And that breaks that down. And now I'm going to just let these sprout. Um, these little berries are gonna get about a fourth, an eighth to a fourth of a little bit of sprout growing on them and then I will stop that sprouting um, by dehydrating them and I dehydrate them down so they're dry enough to grind into flour and then you use the flour and that's how you make flour for bread right all right so anyways I've got a bunch of berries here that I'm going to be sprouting for the next day or two. It'll probably take about two days, maybe even three because it's a little bit chillier in the house nowadays. Summertime's it. In the summer, they can sprout very fast, but in the winter, it's a little bit harder. All right, enough rambling about that, huh? Let's go see what the guys are doing outside. Well, okay, yeah, so you got yours. I guess, uh, so it's uh, like a, is it like a coil valve or is that, okay. How, uh, I guess I'll take a look at it, I'll see what I come up with, and then I'll give you a call back if I want, or, yeah, want you guys to take a look at it if I can't find nothing, so. Okay, thank you. Bye. So I was just about to go outside, and Kevin comes in. I thought they were working outside, but come to find out, Ethan was hauling manure, and the last load that he was going to do for the day the PTO wouldn't start. So then Kevin was on the phone with the tractor um, dealership that we work with, and they said that it's most likely a solenoid or a coil, and it may be challenging to get to. Kevin said he might have to stand on his head. 
So I guess that's what's going on. I'll take you outside. We will have a look-see and hopefully Kevin can solve the issue. So um, as I'm editing this video that you're watching, I realized that I never filled you in on the details of what was happening with the um, Challenger, the tractor. So I've called Kevin in, he's gonna explain it. <laughs> I am gonna explain it? Yes, you are going to explain. So you want some expert advice? Yes, please. Uh, Bonner Challenger, uh, they took a load of manure out and the PTO would not work. So they threw a code um, a code that nobody knew. No, I wasn't familiar with this code. And uh, so I called the dealer and they told me where to look. It's a either a wire, well, first of all, it's either a coil is getting hot and uh, not opening the solenoid to uh, for the oil to flow to the PTO clutch or a wire is broke. So we took and uh, cleaned all the debris. I don't know, there's just a lot of mud up in there. And I checked the wiring and we got power, well, power there. So I'm assuming it's a solenoid. That's the only thing that's really left. So I called them and told them to come replace it. Cause it's not a very easy spot to get to. Um, it's up underneath the cab and on the backside of the electro hydraulic valves. Yeah, I kind of showed that. Yeah, it's, it's not a very fun spot, but um, they have a little more experience with it. I mean, I can do it, but but I got to go there and get the part, and then I got to drive back and do it where they can just drive here and yeah put the part on. Sometimes so, it's just easier. Yeah, and uh, especially where it's at, it's not in the best of spots. So. Yeah. So there you go. We'll keep you posted on its repair. We will? Yeah. They all want to know, huh? I don't know. If you well, guys want to know, we'll keep you posted. Oh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> do you think so? Yeah, it's something put in the video, I guess. Anything else you want to add for this evening? Well, it's below freezing right now. Oh, it is? Yeah. I didn't know it was going to freeze tonight. Yeah, it's kind of a windy, raw day today. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of farmers like to talk about the weather. So yeah. today it was kind of windy and cold and almost a bit. Kind of bite it yeah. in your clothes. Um, but it was good. We uh, got some errands run and I don't know what all you're going to show. So. They're going to see us running errands. Dropping off the scrap. So yeah, um, some, that's uh, where that's where this video is going to continue. <laughs> Oh, is it? Yeah. Dropping off some scrap. <laughs> they don't know that yet. Oh, so no. I let the cat out of the bag? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> Thanks for filling us in. Did I do good? You did great. Thanks. Okay. Twenty-three and a half. Plus twenty-four. What? Forty-seven and a half. Well, four, not quite forty-eight.
surprise you? What you up to? He wants to change out this big pulley. And what, put a smaller one in? Yeah. Try to make it go a little faster? What are you doing right now though? So last year, uh, he bought this Craftsman lawn tractor at an auction. I just had to get, it was a key pin. It was kind of stuck. So you have to take all this off. Yeah. All of this and this tire. And the other tire. And to get this off. And do you have a new pulley already? When are you gonna get a pulley? We got some around here. What? We got some around here. Oh, we have some. So you're gonna see if something else will work. notice our scrap pile has definitely increased so we're gonna take a load of scrap up to the scrap yard so I'm gonna go help Kevin do that done unloading the scrap steel at the scrap yard right now the scrap yard is paying hundred and thirty five dollars per ton of scrap I think it's a long ton it's not an actual 2,000 pounds um, but anyways the price has come up a little bit we were getting 100 and then it went up to 125 and now we see that it was 135 so we decided to bring load in and clean up a little bit. So we come out here and there's a hay bale, there's a straw bale here. And this calf, she decides she's gonna take a nap up on top of the straw bale. Must be more comfortable, huh? You girls are doing a whole lot better, which is great. Um, this one here with the sore um, shoulder, I gave her an inflammatory um, shot and I think she's getting around better. I'm thinking about giving her one more shot. I might wait until tomorrow because I'm not exactly sure how often I'm supposed to give that shot. So, oh, you got her up. Oh. So, anyways, everybody's doing a lot better, even though it's cold. I got so many dark colored calves. There's only a couple whole seams in here. But that's all right. And what are you doing? I'm so Okay. On this side. 
Anyway, that's calf chores for us tonight. Did Sanders wake you up? Did he wake you up? Oh no, it's so sad. Come here. <laughs>